Hello YouTube! It is I, Ryan. I will pretend like I have not been gone for several months, but I will continue like it's never happened. So, have you ever wanted to create a portrait for your character, and you all you could find are these really nice, high-res looking ones, but you just can't use them because you don't know how to without having horrible color loss? Well, this guide is to help you. First, you're going to crop the image of your sprites, or, you know, picture, whatever you want to call it. In my case, I'm just taking the main part of Cross and his sword swinging. I'm going to include that in his uh, portrait. Next, you want to use the freehand selection tool. This is PaintShop Pro I am using. I prefer this over Photoshop. Photoshop confuses me. Um, next, the way freehand works is you connect from point A to point B, and you do it over and over. You do this to outline the entire sprite. Now, I'm going to fast forward this part. I recorded this several days ago, and I had not have time, did not have time, to um, voice this. Now, this is extremely tedious. Um, it might get in your nerves and you might want to make sure you don't double click because if you double click you'll have to start over because it'll make a selection of whatever you have and you can't add to a selection once you have a selection so you have to start over. Um, take your time and uh, don't rush. Now this is some advice that I was given to by uh, someone on Moving Guild. His name is Sai Kuro. Uh, S-A-I-K-O-R-O. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And I asked him, you know, he makes awesome big portraits. So I asked him, you know, um, how do you make your big portraits that great? He says, oh, I take my time. So I said, how long does it normally take you? He says, on a, on a bad day, it could take me six hours. On a good day, two, three hours. So I think the fact that this guy spends so much time on making the big portraits, and I mean, his look amazing. Like, you could not tell this call off at all. The fact that he takes his time to make such wonderful big portraits, it just shows that a lot of people don't put that much effort into them. I mean, there was a point where I didn't put a lot of effort into them. But now I do, uh, hence the reason why I'm showing the tutorial. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead and to the next part. So you wouldn't believe this, but I just sped up this part of the video here by 400% and it looks like I was doing that very slowly. So I think the actual cutting out of this took me probably 4 or 5 minutes. And um, okay, so you know, you, uh, you rip your, I mean you select your, uh, the part that you want which are all of Cross and his effect, and I'm going back to the other end. I'm going to double click the last ending points, and it's going to select it. Next, I'm going to cut it out. Uh, you can press Control X on your uh, keyboard to do that, or right click, or go to Edit and uh, Cut. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to paste it. I disabled the previous uh, layer, the first layer, I disabled it so you don't see it. Now I'm going to perfect it by removing these um, minor pieces in here, which don't belong there. And um, after this, I'm going to um, shrink it down, scale it down to size, to the proper size. Now, you need to remember, if your character, um, oh, well, before I get to that, um, I use Mugen 1.0 now. I think it's, it's the general standard nowadays. So if your character is a low-res character, uh, you need to use the uh, sprite resolution of 120 by 140 for his big portrait. If you're making a high-res character, you need to use a portrait size of um, uh, I'm drawing blanks, 240 by 280. And now, if you're doing an HD character, I believe off the top of my head, I'm not going to use a calculator. You have to use um, 480 by 560 for their big portraits. And I know the number sounds big, but compared to the uh, size of the uh, the character, that's that's nothing. So you're going to get all of these spots in here. When you do this, it kind of looks funky like this. Also, you want to, if you look at the top, uh, just below the icons, I have the anti-alias setting uh, checked, and I also have a feather um, setting checked. Um, anti-alias blurs the edges, which is what you kind of want, because then you have more control over the edges. Um, and the feather, it uh, feather works in a strange way. It basically, uh, it like uh, it's like a buffer into your edges. So see how my edges are really jaggedy like that, and they're not precisely on the sprite? By feathering, it'll take all the sprites around it. Well, like one pixel around it, or two or three, depending on whatever number you put in. I put three in this case, I believe, but you won't really notice it because the sprite, the, the image is really big. So I'll delete all that, and all I'm left with is the image of cross. So my next step would be to make an uh, image that's 120, uh, 120 by 140. And I will scale him down to size to match. Let's see, selection. 
go to image and resize and uh, I'm just trying values I mean I have no proper gauge for this you just do whatever fits in there so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna paste it in the uh, 120 by 140 and move it around until I get a proper image that I want and uh, okay I guess I didn't like that so I'm gonna try this again I'm gonna undo it and resize them again try a different value <clears throat> I'm going to copy and paste, and right there. Now, if you if you rescale it and you downsize and it looks ugly and not so smooth as mine looks, then more than likely um, your your resize settings need to be tweaked a little bit. So you just alter that till you get what you like. So I, I found the like, you know the size that I want, the picture that I want, and I changed the uh, second layer, which you can see on the right side. There's two layers: the black and the sprite itself. I send the second layer to a gray. I could use a black, but I don't want to use a black because there are there are, there are black parts on the character, his main outline. So I use the gray. And as you see, I'm going through the settings here. You can see the way each setting works. Um, some are okay, some are black. You can see slight color changes, which is odd, but you can still see it. And uh, what I recommend is optimize octree and uh, nearest color. I think that says I can barely see it, but yeah. So the middle and then the top for the uh, redu reduction uh, method as you can see these are pretty bad this is for like old stuff standard stuff but this is what I use now so me um, optimize octree and nearest color and you hit the preview button to preview it on the image to make sure you're not losing anything as you can see it's changing slightly and that's because uh, that's how the program uh, controls viewing low res images versus high res images high res images it'll show you however Lower as images, it kind of blurs a little bit. But so that's that. Next, I use the ink dropper. I left click and right click the, the dark gray, and I uh, said as my alpha color. You see, there's still some colors missing in him. That's okay, because if I pick black, it would have been far worse. So now I'm going to save it as a PNG. Uh, okay, and now I'm going to open it in iDraw. iDraw is not an Apple program. iDraw is a application made for Windows. It's actually exclamation draw, but I mean I, that's so many things to say. And uh, I use this program to do the fine, uh, the fine arts of it. Now, um, as you can see, I just re, uh, resetting all of his, uh, his alpha pixels on him to, to a dark color. I'm just using any other dark color. It's not like I have to add a color. I obviously can't add a co color to his palette because it's already taken up. But I'm just using the nearest color to uh, the gray or dark black or whatever to use. And uh, from this point. I just remove the pixels uh, one by one around the edges until I I get just a sprite. Now a thing that uh, Saikuro does is he'll use a um, a semi pre-existing color from the character or part of the character's um, body part and do the edges from that. In my case I simply um, remove the dark edges and use uh, you know the, the, the not so darker edges of it. So like see uh, right now I'm leaving a black outline on him and right here I'm just removing that black outline altogether on that part and you can kinda get an idea of how it looks so the darker your edges the uh, the more it stands out so if, you, if your edges are not dark enough you can build onto it which is what I just did there on his collar and uh, for him I think the trickiest part is his hair he has a lot of hair detail so I'm just gonna you know, remove details one by one, and this is also part of the uh, the very mentally strenuous part. You're gonna be happy there's a control uh, Z for undo when you're doing this. It's it's so like painful to the brain. But as you see, I'm just erasing the darker lines, and it's it's making them stand out more. So you don't want to have a single color against the black, uh, the the alpha color. So I would take a darker shade, which, as you can see in his hair, the darker shade is actually edged around the hair. So this way, on in game, it actually looks really nice. And I'm doing it there on his uh, shoulder as well, adding some darker uh, colors from the blue. And now I'm going to fast forward this again, and this is all just this side now. Uh, so let me stop talking for a second and fast forward. I know I saw I'll stop talking and fast forward, but uh, it's the magic of post-production. So, um, this is sped up by uh, 300% uh, 
official time it took me was nine minutes. Uh, the speed up time is three minutes roughly. So as you can see, this is not that hard. You just have to remove the darker colors and fill them with the light colors for now to start. Now once you finish all the dark colors, you would go back over your image and um, you know put uh, semi-dark colors back in. Uh, I'm also using the line tool. The line tool is very effective for um, a lot of places, which you wouldn't expect. I think the hardest part of uh, a big um, a big portrait that has a nice detail like this is parts of the character that shines. As you see, his hair shines white. And when you're removing parts, you want to remove the dark lines and the bright lines, depending on your background color. Which is why I say to use dark gray. Also, because you know it looks better uh, than using black. And uh, yeah. So while this is going on, um, I, in the future I will be making a, another character tutorial video, which I will dumb down to roughly uh, one hour. Like this, I will do uh, audio and stuff post production, and you know, it'll be the whole character tutorial in one hour. Just uh, you know, more done now. Um, what else? Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Oh. An idea. So, uh, a friend of mine uh, goes by the name Hellzone. He is working on a character named Daichi. He is also from the Dragon Blade games, and he's going to be coming out soon. So you should definitely look forward to that. Um, let's see. Um, Ultra Fatality. He's doing good. Uh, he's uh, working on his uh, what's his face? Um, Shizo from uh, Durara. That's going to be released and uh, very accurate because he's uh, using the game as reference. Uh, more accurate than my Akira. Um, what else is there? Uh, oh yeah, in regards to my drag light characters, uh, um, by the way, my uh, new next tutorial is also going to feature my drag light, another drag light character. So this will make my fourth drag light character. Um, I'm updating all of them. Uh, Zeke has his update already. Cross is getting his update. Is already updated. I just have not uploaded him. Shelly's is getting an update. Then I will update all three of them at the same time. Um, and then I'll do the video on the next character, which I'm not mentioning yet till that video. Um, so, back to this video. As you can see, I'm adding those uh, subtle shades of that color I mentioned to um, add detail around the edges. And also when you're doing this, this is the best time for you to spot check your sprites. Like, you know, if you see a random color that shouldn't be there, just remove it. And uh, you know it's actually funny because um, you can't see his sword in this big picture, but uh, his big portrait. But uh, you see the the slash effect. I mean, I could legitimately remove it, and nobody would know any better. But I I chose to leave it just because that's that's how I wanted it, you know. So now that it's saved, um, it's already a PNG and it's already opened an iDraw. So at this point, I can save it and it'll work in Mugen. So I'm just going to replace it now. Uh, group nine thousand index one. I will not crop it. And I'll hit OK to this option, just to let the palace there with it. That's the original portrait, and then boom, that's the new portrait. So I think this looks really good. Um, the one thing you should remember in I draw your background color, I prefer to use teal. That's my prefer uh, preferability. But you know, against the actual thing here, removing it looks kind of bad with uh, this outline here. It looks too many dark lines together. So I'm just going to remove some more lines. Well, that's actually. But uh, yeah, so that's basically how you would take a high res image and scale it, you know, crop it out, scale it down, um, and then, you know, go over it, with, you know, take your time and go over it and remove those edge, edges to make your sprite look great. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Expect more in the future. Bye.